This week on Paving the Funnel, we're talking to Scott Brightnether about data stacks and data maturity. Scott's the founder of Brooklyn Data Co., a consultancy that builds best-in-class data and analytics capabilities for high-growth companies. Just to kick everything off, can you help our viewers understand why it's even important, especially as an e-commerce or direct-to-consumer business, to even invest in data to begin with? What I always think data does is it, it helps you make better decisions. Now, when you're investing in data, you really want to do three things. Um, you want to automate, you want to um, produce insights, and you want to enable your stakeholders. So automation essentially means that you know there are manual processes going on on all of your business to analyze, report, make decisions. And so investing in data really helps to uh, streamline those processes, allow people to go deeper and to prevent errors. Uh, you know, the next piece is insights. Ultimately, we wanna use data to understand the drivers of our business so that we can make really good business decisions so that we can impact those drivers and ultimately impact our bottom line. So the third component is enablement. Ultimately, if the only folks on, in your organization that can create those insights is a small group of data folks in a centralized function, you're really not maximizing the value of your investment in data. And so that third piece of enablement is really about self-service. It's about partnering with the stakeholders across your business and giving them the tools to make decisions using data themselves. Can you tell me what the common starter data stack looks like? Really great question. I think the um, the answer is the starter data stack is really not having a data stack. It's it's answering your questions in the tools that are generating the data. You have Shopify, look at the analytics built into Shopify. You have Zendesk, look at the analytics built in there. You know, in the event that you want to visualize something um, or potentially combine multiple data sets, you bring that into Excel or a really lightweight probably free uh, data visualization tool like uh, Google Data Studio. I know it's very tempting to go all in and buy every expensive tool uh, really early on. And again, that is a strategy. I think it's expensive. And I think you might find yourself spending more time implementing rather than getting value out of those tools. What's the more mature or growth stack look like? There's going to be a point where your business uh, at least the business model is solidified, the, s the scale is increasing. And what I like to say is essentially your, the, the requests for data and analysis go from growing linearly to exponentially. And that's both in kind of quantity and uh, complexity. And so at that point, you're really going to want to invest in what I would call more of that kind of growth stage stack and that stack that will grow with you. And And the amazing thing is that, you know, Nowadays, the tooling that you bring on when you kind of start to invest in your stack is actually the tooling that will can scale for the foreseeable future. The components that you're going to want to look at investing in are ingestion, storage, transformation, and presentation. And so if we look at that, ingestion is bringing the data into your data warehouse from all your disparate data sources. So that's things like Fivetran and Stitch. Uh, storage, you know, where are they going to be stored? Where are they going to be accessed from? Um, and those are data warehouses like uh, Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, um, Transformation. So remember, we brought in all these disparate data sources. We need to combine them and essentially um, build in business logic and make them easier to use. And essentially also build in some testing so that we can be uh, assured that the, the data is quality. Um, and those are transformation tools like DBT. And then finally, uh, the presentation layer. How are folks across the business consuming the data? And you know that's your classical BI tools like Looker, Tableau, Mode, SciSense for cloud data teams. In parallel is folks will also be investing in product analytics stack. So um, in, in a product analytics stack, you're going to want to have a tool that can essentially ingest data uh, and help you visualize it. What you actually find is that that problem is, I would say, a little bit unique to kind of your core business analytics and growth stack. And that will probably require purpose-built tools like Heap, Amplitude, um, Snowplow, uh, tools that have can handle both the quantity of data and the complexity of the queries that you need to produce a funnel analysis. Where do you start? You mentioned a few key areas, ingestion and so on. Wh which, which tool do you invest in first? 
Ooh, good question. Um, I think the warehouse is key. Uh, so having some place to put all the data is is super helpful. Uh, you know, the next step is you know the ingestion piece and getting the data in. And so actually, at that point, you could actually, if you know SQL or kind of Python or R, you can actually do some pretty interesting analysis because you have granular scale data and a scalable computing resource that you could an use to answer questions. You know, the next things that you want to think about are uh, the presentation layer. And so the presentation layer, like a Looker or a Tableau, and visualizing the data in the warehouse. And then I would say the last component is the transformation layer. The transformation component is really important in, in creating efficiency, helping to ensure that your data is, is kind of of a certain level of quality and is easy to work with, but it is not a must have. Um, it, it's probably the last step, but a very important step and a really powerful step. Have you noticed in your experience companies um, running into any pitfalls in making those investments? Ooh, pitfalls. Good question. Uh, I think it's very easy to get yourself into a spot where you're over investing. You know, the square footage of what you build, you have to maintain. And as you imagine, as your business model changes, you add different channels, different geographies, different currencies, you're going to need to update everything. And so I would say, just build what you need is my suggestion in both in the engineering perspective and the tools. Don't really invest in, in, in a tool until you really need it. But when you do, make sure you actually have the, the internal team resources to manage that tool. There's nothing worse than investing in a tool and, and then not having a person to help implement and manage it. Tools end up being multipliers. And so they have to have something to multiply. You can't just get a tool and assume that uh, even without putting additional resource in, you're not going to get the benefit out of it. If if someone's questioning, kind of diving into this for for the first time and wants to build from the ground up a, a, a world class data practice, mm -hmm. how do they do that from the people perspective? You know, back in the day, you'd have to hire this really expensive, super well rounded MacGyver of an individual that could essentially implement everything from the ground up. Now the role of the data team is much more curating uh, a selection of great tools. Uh, architectural design of how the tools work together and then adapting them to your kind of unique business context. And so my challenge is like, I say for the first zero to 20 employees, I wouldn't actually even hire a data person. I would bring in part-time consultants um, like Brooklyn Data, but also just bring in someone that knows what they're doing to just solve a specific problem and then leave because you don't need a full-time person. 20 to 70 or 80 people, you're going to want to hire kind of mid-level folks that are technical enough to to do analysis and and build infrastructure, but maybe not uh, set the high-level roadmap or interface with the C-level. So you're looking at a senior analyst and an analytics engineer or something like that, and then some sort of fractional uh, leadership, like a fractional head of data. Because again, you don't need a full expensive head of data, but you probably need like 10% of a head of data just to really set the roadmap. Um, that little ten percent can help you go a long way, and then uh, you know once you get eighty plus, I think you certainly need um, to invest in data leadership and then kind of build out the team. Scott, I'm super curious if you don't mind sharing. Based on all of the wisdom you have now in your years of experience, what would you go back and tell yourself a decade or more ago in your first in your first role in data? I think you know there's three main things that I, lessons that I've learned. Uh, the first is that all of your his, data history doesn't have to be perfect. You know, if you are growing incredibly fast as a company, your next six months, you'll generate more data than your last two years. And so, you know, really being forward focused is super important. I think the second thing is that, you know, data is inherently downstream. And so often we feel like, we're just kind of getting what just flows to us and we have no ability to say, hey, upstream, can you make a change? I, I would say challenge yourself, data folks, to say maybe there are some small changes in the production application that will make your lives so much easier and make everything more efficient. Let the engineering team know. They'll actually work on it for you. And then the third, the third learning is really, and again, maybe I'm slightly biased, but this is why I started Brooklyn Data is hire consultants. 
if you are trying to solve a specific problem, bring someone in that knows what they're doing. Yes, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. They'll be in and out really quick, and you'll you just have that capability sooner rather than later. Whereas, you know, if I looked at my experience, I used to wait until we had the the head count and the budget and the time to build everything internally or learn it and internalize the skill set. When theoretically, I could have been benefiting from that capability or that tool much earlier on had I brought someone in just to, who knew what they were doing. So, Scott, just one last question. Um, if anyone watching this video wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do it? Well, you can visit our website, brooklyndata.co, or you can email me anytime, scott at brooklyndata.co. I'm always happy to just um, bounce ideas about data. I feel very privileged to do something that I love, which is talk about and work in data all day. So don't hesitate to reach out. Cool. Well, this has been super fun, Scott. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Always a pleasure. Anytime.